Okay. Uh, hello and welcome to View from the Tower podcast. My name is Grace. And my name is Joe. And today we're going to do a summary of the movie Syriana by Stephen Gaggin and a little bit of uh, like discussion slash like our opinions about what this movie is about and how it affects like international relations. So I guess to start off, we'll give you like a summary of what the movie is about. So do you want to start, Joe? Um, I don't have a summary. Okay. So the movie starts off with like um, talking about um, foreign policy of America in um, the Middle East. And there's a bunch of subplots, but basically the storyline is about um, oil politics and um, it has to do with Iran and the uh, rise to power there. And then there are two oil companies, Connex and Colleen, that are uh, trying to get a stake in the oil, um, how would you say? The oil business. Okay. So here we go. This is from Wikipedia, to give them credit. So, uh, U.S. energy giant Connex is losing control of key Middle East oil fields in a kingdom ruled by the al Subai family. The Emirates foreign minister, Prince Nasir, has granted natural gas drilling rights to a Chinese company, greatly upsetting the U.S. oil industry and government. To compensate for its decreased production capacity, Connex in initiates a shady merger with Colleen, a smaller oil company that recently won drilling rights to the key petroleum fields in Kazakhstan. Connex Colleen ranks as the world's 23rd largest wait, what? a smaller oil company that won that recently won the drilling rights to key petroleum fields in Kazakhstan. What the heck? You just okay. read the wrong. Excuse that. Connex Colleen ranks as the world's 23rd largest economy. And antitrust regulators at the United States Justice Department have misgivings. A Washington, D.C. based law firm headed by Dean Wing is hired to smooth the way for the merger. Bennett Holiday is assigned to promote the impression of due diligence to the DOJ, deflecting any allegations of corruption. Okay. So that's just a general summary of what this movie is about. And so now we're going to talk about um, some different. Themes and like uh, things that happen. Um, messages in the movie mm -hmm. that the movie is cause and effect. Like that. Okay, so do you want to start? Or do you want to start? Um, I can start. Um, I think the whole movie is really based around the United States' um, activities that really everybody would consider unethical because. Their activities are all got, are all directed into an effort to advance themselves economically, mm -hmm. and so the United States does things that everybody would consider wrong. Um, I guess subjectively wrong um, because they're they're willing to do anything to advance themselves. So there, there's a particular Bible verse that I'm thinking of that, that says um, man loves darkness because his deeds are evil. And the whole movie is based around the United States is hiding in the darkness to try and um, to cover up their, their deeds. But at the same time, they're trying to, to do as much as they can to, to get the best oil deal that they can possibly get. So... Um, the whole movie portrays how how the government is working to manipulate various people in the Middle Eastern area in order to to get the deal, and how certain individuals are realizing that they're realizing what's going on, and they're trying to stop the government's efforts to do this as well. So uh, that kind of leads into a social aspect of this movie it being emotion playing into politics. So um, Matt Damon plays um, a he's kind of a like a I guess he's a he was part of a company that like promotes this and he like goes and talks to uh, different leaders about like what they're going to do and um, 
Matt Damon's son ends up dying at one of the uh, main leader leaders of Iran's house, and um, it kind of goes to show that he he ends up kind of giving up his family for um, the better of the country. So, backstory: um, in Iran, there is um, a certain power struggle between. Uh, the two brothers. Um, two brothers. The emir, their king, their father is the king, and um, he has to decide which one of them is going to be his successor. So the older brother, Prince Nasir, is more of a democratic. He wants there to be women to have the right to vote. He wants uh, democracy. He wants people to be able to vote and have rights. He represents Western values in this movie. Right. And his younger brother, uh, his name is Mashal, I think. Um, he is more of the corrupt leader and he's being influenced by an American oil company and they want him to be in power so that they can take advantage of him. So Matt Damon um, is sort of an advisor to the older brother Nasir as, at one point and um, he kind of supports him and uh, goes with him along his journey to try to uh, get the role of Amir for Iran. and. Um, he, Matt Damon sees like that Nasir would be the better ruler, but he's kind of, he's also ignorant to the fact that he doesn't know that they're going to try to assassinate Nasir, which is a whole, which is another story. We'll get into that. And then also about George Clooney. Um, George Clooney also is a, uh, is an actor that's in this movie. He portrays a CIA agent that, um, he, he's he's about to retire, but he he kind of loves his job, and he 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 really enjoys um, his missions in the Middle East. But his son really is is having a, a large influence upon him because he he wants to have a family life, and he wants to to be there for his son. But at the same time, he wants to do what he loves, and so. Um, George Clooney is initially sent on a mission to assassinate the elder brother Nazir because that's what the CIA wants him to do um, because it, because Nazir is not going to give the best oil deal to the United States and so when George Clooney gets over there he he gets captured and the CIA cuts ties with him because they don't they, they say they portray him as a rogue agent um, that because they, they don't really want to they don't want the world to see their plans they don't want the world to see them as uh, somebody who's trying to assassinate and manipulate um, politics as someone who's trying to like an organization that's trying to have control over an entire nation in the Middle East so they cut ties with George Clooney, and George Clooney, his character really, um, he he doesn't he does not appreciate this, because he he sees that this has happened, and he he sees that Nazir is going to be a turnaround for for this country, and so Nazir um, really, what well, he was on the hit list of the of the CIA, but the agents sent to kill him. Um, Bob, who's portrayed by George Clooney, um, re he realizes that that Nazir is the is the best outcome of the power struggle. He's best the best hope for Iran. Yeah, and so he he embarks on this mission to kind of to kind of save Iran from. The United States is plots from from their assassination attempts, and uh, instead of carrying out that mission, he he ends up trying to um, trying to do everything that he possibly can to get Nazir into power, and uh, that's that's kind of where um, that's kind of what his story is about. Mm -hmm. He puts aside his family and his own selfishness to. Uh, in the end, he actually dies for this cause. He ends up um, driving, <laughs> they're driving cars, and then he drives and tries to warn them that a uh, assassination attempt is coming from the CIA, and um, they end up all dying in the end. So the 
the overlying thing that we're trying to get at is that um, sometimes it was important for these characters to put their um, morals for the whole country ahead of um, their own self-interest and they realized like the right path and so then another um, social aspect of this is uh, culture in uh, Iran is affected um, there's another sad story of a suicide bomber who um, grows up in Iran and then he gets laid off and him and his dad get laid off and um, he becomes influenced by some radical uh, Islamists and he's kind of surrounded by that whole idea and is uh, really influenced by those views and doesn't really, I guess, understand like what exactly he's doing. He yeah, understands, but, but, but like... Whenever he lost his job, it, it, it really left him destitute with nowhere to turn. And, um, and the alternative that was presented to him was to become a, uh, an Islamic extremist. So he... he um, he kind of goes into this religious um, this, this religious um, spell where he he, he kind of uh, he, he's seeking some kind of um, some kind of uh, retribution for um, for the country that laid him off for the excuse me the company that, that laid him off and so he he, he wants to uh, in, in in an act of rebellion against the country he uh, it, excuse me, the company. Uh, in an act of rebellion against the company, he um, he becomes a terrorist. He he um, he gets on this boat and uh, he drives it straight into one of their cargo ships that is uh, shipping oil. And just to back up, this is because of the merger. Um, the reason that he was laid off is because uh, the merge of Connex and Clean, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, it's a, sort of an economic thing, but um, yeah, he, like Joe was saying, he uh, becomes sort of uh, in this. He doesn't really. Th he's not really thinking about like the effects. He just wants like to be liberated, and he wants to be um, given. I guess uh, given um, his. He wants his vengeance, kind of. Yeah, and he will be rewarded in the next life. Is what sort of the idea is behind that. Um, and then to, uh, hold on, go ahead. I was thinking, I just lost my train of thought. Um, to talk more about the uh, rise to power, the whole power struggle going on in Iran between Nazir and his brother and their father, um, it kind of brings in the question of uh, what was the USA's role in this? So I think um, an interesting thing about this movie is to show that, like, the U.S. kind of, in actually not kind of, really influenced this whole uh, rise to power thing. Normally, it would have been the older brother that got the seat of power because he was the eldest, and the power goes to him. But um, the U.S. kind of stuck its nose in there in a way and uh, yeah, really influenced the dad's decision. They're they're not nearly as innocent as what they would like everyone to think them to be. Um, they uh, they're kind of. It, it, the movie, the movie is is made to um, to show the United States' hand in uh, in foreign affairs, not just in the Middle East, but in various places all over the world. And uh, it uses this this um, scenario to um, to convey that uh, the United States is 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 in the game for its own self interest. It's not um, it's not fighting for righteousness it's fighting for um it's fighting for economic uh purposes in this in this particular movie and so uh and i think some people would say yeah. that that's okay like in order to stay sort of objective and kind of play double devil's advocate here i think some people would say that um economic interest should be over righteousness like we have to make sure that our uh government and our um our economy stays intact but then on the other side of that we have to question like what should our role in foreign policy yeah, what, be what is the, what is the united states going toward they they had they had two choices one was um the economic route which uh which obviously was the oil deal but the other one was to uh, to allow prince nazir to become the emir 
and uh, that would have led to um, the institution of democratic policies in, in the Middle East, which had never been seen before. Uh, Nazir represented all the uh, what we would like to think of as good Western values. Uh, he was educated at Oxford. He's a really smart guy, and uh, he really knew how to be a a, a good leader. He he was really going to put a lot of effort into it, and um, that's historically the United States has has wanted this to happen in as many nations as they can get it to happen yeah, in. take Vietnam for example and uh, yeah I mean they, they fought for the righteous cause every time uh, you know so-called righteous uh, they fought for uh, for Western policies and have even started wars you know the, the Korean War the Vietnam War I mean all those uh, all that plays into the United States want to uh, to eradicate communism and and actually stop it before it gets into the those um, Southeast Asian nations and uh, in this movie um, it shows the, the opposite United, side yeah, the, which is interesting because the United States is like they're, they're they have the opportunity to uh, to organically produce it I mean, they don't even have to to cause it to happen they they only have to allow it to happen they have a because willing it's, it's leader. going to naturally happen because of Nazir, because Nazir's natural role, um, excuse me, Nazir's birthright was to be the king because he was he was the firstborn son, and so uh, you know it shows you know sixty or seventy years later into the future, you know it shows how the United States is is in the dark trying to uh, manipulate entire nation's futures for the sake of its own economic gain and uh, that's that's really that really sums the movie up pretty good um, um, another thing to talk about is um, the whole situation with um, the with uh, Bob what was his last name uh, I don't really remember but. Bob is the CIA agent so yeah. um, Bob kind of goes through like a personal like we talked about earlier he goes through a personal revelation and realizes that Nazir doesn't need to be assassinated for the reasons that Joe just talked about he was going to be a good leader but um, I think something that's interesting too is that once Bob fails in his mission to assassinate Nazir he is captured by Musawi who is a mercenary he's a side character and um, he's tortured and goes through this terrible thing and then he finally gets back to America and um, the CIA cuts him loose because they don't want to be, they don't want to be tied to him. They don't want to have that um, that negative connotation. They don't yeah. want to have that negative reputation. That they don't want people to think that they were trying to assassinate Nasir, even though they, even though they definitely were. And so I think that kind of is also a test to like how much political power do they have? Like they really like were worried about their reputation. So they obviously knew that that's, that this was wrong and that the public would disagree with them, which is why they tried to hide it. So I think that makes an interesting point is to say that they did it even though they knew it was wrong and then they tried to cover it up. It also shows how, um, how the CIA wants to, uh, wants to have a large influence in world affairs because, you know, you think about this single government agency that is trying to, that they're doing it in the name of, of good and for protecting the United States but at the same time, they're they're assassinating a a, a would be king. They're assassinating a prince before he, uh, you know, they 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 want to get him out of the way, um, and they took matters into their own hands by trying to assassinate Prince Nazir. Um, they they made a decision for the United States, um, which. You know, ultimately, it was what the United States wanted because Nazir wasn't going to lead to the best economic um, outcome. So it, it did line up with what they uh, what they were initially wanting. But they they pretty much made a decision for the president of the United States. You know, they they kind of wanted to be the uh, the uh, organization that is in charge of the entire. Um, plan they they wanted to uh, to have as much 
international influence as they can. And uh, it, it kind of makes you think about, it makes you question your, your government um, leaders, your, your agency leaders and, and uh, the, the president's cabinet, you know, all, all the, uh, the heads of these agencies and things, you know, whether or not that they actually, uh, you know, sometimes, whether or not they actually inform the president uh, fully every time, every single time. Uh, because they want, they may want to uh, advance their own interests. So uh, it really brings into question uh, the honesty of the uh, American government and whether or not that they sacrifice their uh, their telling of the whole truth or telling the truth at all uh, for the sake of uh, of advancing their own individual uh, interests. I also think that brings up uh, an interesting point about the balance of power. We've, we've been kind of talking about um, how foreign policy comes to be and like who's in charge of that. So um, I think it's important to say that um, it is a balance. Like there's different groups that decide. So like what Joe was saying, it makes you wonder like how much the president really is in control because we always say that, you know, the executive branch has power over foreign policy mostly, which is true. But the president falls back on his cabinet, his advisors, people that he trusts because he doesn't know everything. And um, I think it's important to say that it's people are so quick to um, base their blame, I guess, on the president and like, you know, how dare he do blah, blah, blah. But I think it's really important to remember that it's not just him. It's the people that present it to him leaders of the different um, groups, the National Security Council, the um, CIA, the FBI, people like that, they can really twist what they say to make it sound not so bad, you know, maybe present it in a way that the president would be like, okay, I guess this is a hard decision that just has to be made, instead of really thinking about, like, the consequences of it and, like, how it would affect that country and affect us and our relationship with them. And so I think it's that's an important point to make, not to be repetitive, yeah. but to say that you know we have to make sure that we don't place the blame on one person because it is a group of people, and you do have to question how much power each person has. So um, I think that kind of leads into the next thing, which is um, the economic like influence that influences that cause this problem. Obviously, this whole movie is kind of about like the economic interest of the U.S. being placed above everything else, which in some cases is important, but in this case, I think we could argue, you could definitely argue that it was morally... Um, unjust. Yeah, unjust, exactly. So um, the whole thing about Connex and Colleen, okay, so Connex is a major, was a major in this, in this movie, uh, is a major uh, U.S. oil firm, and so... There's this untapped oil reserve in Kazakhstan um, that were not that they weren't allowed to uh, have, and so there was kind of this shady like agreement between Connex and a smaller company, Colleen, who did have the um, rights to this oil reserve, and um, I think it's uh, interesting that that kind of went under the nose of like a lot of the government officials, there was like some investigation into it, but then um, that's another one of the little backstories. I won't get too far into that, but there was um, some investigation and then there was like this this conclusion that there wasn't enough evidence to really indict them or like stop them or anything. So Yeah, I mean, a company that, that goes from 23rd largest in the world to becoming the fifth largest in the world, they... Um, they, they really should have had more investigation into this affair, but obviously it's about um, e economic and political corruption. So, um, you know, it, it, the kind of the deal kind of got shoved under the rug um, for the sake of convenience. Uh, and so Colleen had this, um, had the stake and Connex really, uh, they they want they saw that as an opportunity to um, to become a larger firm, so they they uh, kind of just absorbed this smaller company into itself. And uh, from then on, they're they're looking out for uh, for ways that they can get they can just produce more 
uh, profit. They, 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 you know, there's they they influence um, they influence Nazir's brother. I think. Oh yeah, there's but, a group of. Um, do you care if I? Uh, it's that's fine. Go there's ahead. a group of. Um, leaders, I guess, of conics that kind of, that even go over it. They travel to Iran and they're with the younger brother for a little while and it doesn't really show what they say to him or anything, but um, they basically turn him against his older brother and um, they really influence, They, I think even at some point it kind of suggests that they talk to his father, the king, the emir, um, and kind of influence his decision as well. And they're all from the U.S. So, and they don't, they're businessmen, so they have no, like, ex I mean, I would assume they would have no experience as to what this would do to the culture, to the nation's government. They're just simply Not interested. Not they have any concern anyways. Right. They're just interested in their business, and they don't even think about, I mean, I mean, who would expect them to think about what, what foreign policy, how it would affect that. But I think it also shows that the government, our government, um, our foreign policy people, it was almost as if they didn't have any idea that that was even going on. So I feel like it's important for us to also, uh, I guess, make more important. I don't to know, to like, be more informed and yeah. to, to be, yeah, to, to kind about. of be like a, like a watchdog mm -hmm. in a way, um, not to just let um, anything that happens in the United States um, come to pass. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's the duty of the citizens um, to to stand up whenever they see something that is that's going wrong, and uh, to expose it and to bring it to light. And uh, they they hired a a, a guy that um, that really uh, he he gave a um, he actually gave an honest report to. Uh, Richard McDonald. Yeah. The African American. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they uh, he he actually gave an honest report to the politicians rather than a pleasing report. Yeah. And uh, he he was uh, reprimanded for that because of. Uh, and he was willing to go in and do the dirty work. He even talked to um, the main uh, leader of Connex. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, it's it's fine. I um, talked to the main leader of Connex, whose name was Janice. He was kind of a typical you know businessman you think of with fat belly and just like drunk all the time but um he even threatened him at one point in the movie and that was really admirable so i feel like we need more people like that in our government who are yeah. willing to go and do the dirty work and dig up the dirt on people and not worry about being reprimand reprimanded by the state yeah what else were you gonna say um well that pretty much uh that pretty much was it i mean we do need uh people that are that are not interested in uh, they're, they're not politically ambitious and they're not um, they're not seeking social status or um, monetary status because you know from the from their jobs they, they want the truth they seek the truth and uh, you know the the whole I mean Bob the CIA agent he he ends up seeing the actual truth, and uh, he he ends up fighting for the truth. Matt Damon's character ends up fighting for the truth, and so uh, even Nazir ends up fighting for the truth. He yeah. puts his life on the line by saying, "Hey, I'm going to be a better leader. I may not do business with you the way you want to, but I'm going to be a better leader." And so, and they all get killed for that. Yeah, and and I think another thing that's pretty interesting is the 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 guy that became a terrorist. I mean, in his own yeah. mind, he was fighting for the truth, mm -hmm. um, or at least fighting against the country or the company that that laid him off because he Connex, he yeah. felt like he had been done. Um, he felt like they had done Wrong him unjustly, yeah. and uh, and so in his mind, he was fighting for the right cause. Uh, to all of us, it was an act of terrorism, but um, it's a, it's a matter of perspective. Right. Um, so I mean, it, it's. There are all these parallels between individuals that are up against uh, larger entities such as, uh, you know, oil giants or the United States government or whatever it may be. Whoever's above you kind of controls. Yeah, I mean, there, there are, you know, countless examples of, um, of the, it's, it's, it's the classic uh, stereotypical situation of uh, 
of a of an almost powerless individual versus an all powerful entity like a company or a government, mm -hmm. and uh, it really shows how um, that you know there are several subplots that that play out in different ways to show different results of uh, of the scenarios. You know that the, the the one guy that you know the the man that became a a, a so called terrorist he. Uh, he ended up uh, sacrificing his life for his cause, as did Bob, because uh, Bob was killed in the drone strike that assassinated Nazir and his family. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's an interesting parallel. I think. Yeah, I, it's uh, it's it very shows, interesting. And I think a lot. I think that's almost really. I'm coming to realize now that's kind of the central idea in this movie is like um, the individual influenced by the entity, like you were talking about. Yeah. These people all kind of. Shift the power, yeah. At some point, George or George Clooney, George Clooney, aka Bob, shifts into the right. The um, young man who becomes a terrorist shifts sort of into what we would consider as the wrong at some point. And Matt Damon shifts into he's puts his family on the back burner and he almost dies for his cause yeah. too. He 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 very nearly, uh, excuse me, very very narrowly escapes death, mm -hmm. and um, he. Uh, he said he his son um, dies in a pool as he is on a business trip, and um, his his it really puts a, a huge strain on his family because um, his family needs a time of healing from this. His son and his wife, as well as him, as well as himself, and uh, instead of uh, instead of going back to the United States and taking a uh, a leave of absence or something from his from his job. It fires his. Yeah, it, it ignites his desire to see a. Uh, he he sees he sees that Iran is at a crossroads, uh, because they can either have, um, Nazir become the king the excuse me the Emir, and uh, institute Western policies and and uh, what we would um, what we would say would be progress. He he would bring about progress in the Middle East uh, which may or may not be long term but I mean he would uh, he would at least get get it started and uh, he Matt Damon's character he wanted to be a part of that and uh, he put his he put his family on the back burner um, so that he could um, so that he could do everything he, he wanted to get everything out of his way so that he could fight for this cause and uh, it really, uh, it really puts a strain on him in the end. Um, um, and his family eventually heals back together. But so another part of this uh, conflict is the military aspect of it. So um, from there, call we call into question like, okay, what what agencies are involved? Basically, it's the CIA. Mostly, most of this is the CIA. Um, so in this movie, the CIA is portrayed as pretty corrupt. Like you kind of get to see the bad side of it, the negative side of it. Now that also comes to like another question: is how realistic is that really? Um, yeah, I mean, would uh, you know how often does this happen? Uh, does the CIA want to uh, to be behind the reins of foreign affairs? Um, you know how 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 realistic is it that the government? Um, does such things like the government wants to be in control of, of uh, not only the United States but affairs within um, other nations and uh, you know international affairs because they uh, they're looking out for themselves um, or at least that's their excuse for that. Mm -hmm. um, some may say that they are uh, they're they're just they're too powerful. Yeah. That they're, that they're sticking their nose into something that they shouldn't be, but, um, you know, it's a matter of perspective, um, and, and each situation varies, you know. Yeah. There very well may be, be a situation in which uh, the United States needs um, needs to be uh, acting in its, in its own self-interest. You know, I'm, I'm, that's why I'm a believer in the CIA is that um, it's important that we have an agency that um, that looks out into the rest of the world to see if there's an incoming threat 
uh, because that is that's part of protecting the citizens, and that's part of a that's a duty of the government. But also, uh, in my mind, yeah. But also, um, another thing I want to bring into this is um, go ahead the whole thing about um, military leaders. You have to think again about the president it being he's sort of considered in governmental terms to be kind of all powerful in this. He's the he has the last say usually in foreign policy. But um like we were saying earlier, he The is, CIA was the head shot caller in this. Uh they they made the decision on behalf of the United States. And what I was gonna say is that the president is um really influenced by the people that are closest to him. So military that includes military leaders and like the leader of the CIA. So you have to think about if you were in the president's shoes, you know, that these situations are being presented to you. And maybe, just maybe, the truth is kind of being sugar coated a little bit. Like maybe, you know, a military some, some distortion. Yeah. A military uh, some leader occasional distortion. A military leader wouldn't come to the president and say, Well, we're gonna assassinate this prince because he's not going to give us a good oil, good enough oil deal. He maybe would say, well, this prince is showing to be a little bit hostile towards the United States and isn't going to give us what we want, maybe, and so, so we might have some trouble out of him. So, and, But his younger brother is going to uh, cooperate with us, and he's willing to um, really work with us and talk with us about uh, foreign affairs and help us with uh, the oil deal in Kazakhstan. So you have to think about being the president, a human, you would be, what would you do? You know, what would you say? Yeah, How would you under, know? He's really under a lot of pressure. Um, and uh, he, he can't exactly trust everybody all the time. Um, he, you know, he, he's capable of making mistakes because, uh, you know, it, it's the government is an organization that uh, the likes to think of itself as a, uh, as a superior to to uh, humans, but they uh, it's made up of humans. it's made up of it's composed of humans, and uh, because of that, it's incapable of doing everything absolutely perfectly. Exactly. And um, especially whenever the president is being uh, misadvised, and so um, you know it it's 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 really important that. Um, that we have honest men and women that are uh, that are guiding the president to uh, to eradicate as many mistakes uh, as as possible, because you know we're already going we're not we're already Even not going to make it to a hundred percent. We'll uh, never be able to uh, to eradicate all one hundred percent of that. But I mean, it, it adds a whole another layer to it whenever um, each agency is is in it for. Um, themselves and I think this I'm gonna kind of throw in a, a, an idea of mine that it's kind of made itself clear to me throughout this discussion is that maybe instead of having um, all-powerful sects of um, government on foreign policy the executive branch like the National Security Council and the CIA FBI all that the president maybe we should more focus on like putting it through a vote sometimes yeah, um, making it more that way, democratic. That way, it has to be presented to everybody, and everybody has to vote on it. And then maybe you'll get more of an objective view from people than rather than just having a, one body decide. Because like we've been talking about, um, knee-jerk reactions happen. That's a human thing that happens, and we can't help it. And um, it sometimes takes a voice of reason to eradicate those and maybe make you take a step back and say, okay, what are going to be the long terms of long-term effects of this what are they going to be yeah. and um that's sometimes a hard thing to do it's hard to be that person to say well we're not gonna we can't just attack them right back you know after 9 11 we were trying to talk about this in class um we don't know how those people felt because we were too young but um it's easy to sit back and say well if i were in their shoes i would have done something different would you have Maybe, maybe not, but it is hard to be that person to say, okay, we have to step back. We have to get above the emotional part and think about what's actually going to happen if we do attack them. So I think that's where a vote or maybe something like that would come in handy. And um, do you want to move on to the conclusion? Uh, yeah, I think, I think it's some, uh, about time to wrap it up. Yeah. yeah, we have some questions that we'd like to kind of leave you with. Um, and maybe discuss a little bit between ourselves before we go. So our first question is, do economic interests trump American values? Should they? 
Um, and I'll How go, often do they? Yeah, I'll go first and say my opinion, and you can say yours. Yep. Is that okay? Okay. So, okay. Um, economic interests. I'm a firm believer that uh, without a good econ economy, economy, that you can't have um, a good government, good democracy. Um, but I also have to call upon my moral values and think about, you know, how far is too far? How far is... The, where's the line, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, do they trump American values? No, I would say that they shouldn't. But um, sometimes, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm a person who tries to, like, step back and take a look at it from both sides. Um, it's a really hard position to be put in, especially with something like, you know, think about the Great Depression. I almost think that a president during that time would have done anything to get us out of that. You know, our country was suffering. There was so much suffering going on. But then, again, you have a situation like this present in this movie where, obviously, economic interests shouldn't have been placed above American values. And so I think it kind of, I don't know, it kind of wavers for me. I think it depends on the situation. But I think we should always try to have a moral, um, moral, our morals about us. We should always try to preserve, you know, what we stand for. And that, I think, cannot be argued. You know, you have to have... Um, your morals alongside you. Um, okay, so what I mean by American values. Um, I guess what I mean is sort of like the Constitution, you know, everybody has the right to life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, and I guess we also were talking about this the other day. Um, does that extend to people who are non-citizens? I think it should. I mean, that's just being a good person. That's just being a good nation. Um, another American value, it would be like, you know, the freedoms, the freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom of religion, all that stuff. Um, people are going to have their own opinions. People are going to have their own cultures. And we've always been a nation to, like, um, embrace that. And so I think that it's important to respect other people's cultures, but it gets to a point sometimes where you need to say, okay, that's not okay, that crosses the line. But then again, that line is hard to find. So it's easy to sit back and say, well, we we can uh, make sure that people aren't doing bad things, but what is a bad thing? Like we've been saying, it's it's yeah, it's, it's, it's all it's, about perspective. Yeah, it's a subjective, um, it's a subjective topic. Mm -hmm. um, that pretty much sums it up for me. I mean, I I'm not going to say uh, that the real issue is where your um, you know where the balance is. You know, I'm not going to say that uh, American values are always. Um, are, are always uh, should always take precedence over economic uh, uh, over uh, economic interest. Yeah, economic interest. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to say that uh, money is the most important thing because obviously it's not. I mean, even if the United States hadn't got the oil deal, um, they would have. Uh, they would have at least had uh, had this Middle Eastern nation on a path to. Uh, to getting um, democracy, to, to 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 getting democracy, and you know, uh, you know, American values, um, enfranchisement of women, um, you know, Nazir represented that, and uh, and they they killed, they literally killed their chance to uh, to have that, mm -hmm. and um, it's for really for the sake of money, and uh, and so I don't, I think it's important that we. Uh, we make sure that money is not the the direct uh, the 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 chief influence of, of our decision making, uh, and so uh, that really that really is all I have to say about it. Okay, and then our our last question before we go is um, how realistic do you think this movie is? Um, I'll keep it short and just say that um, I think this could definitely happen. It probably has in the past. I don't know how corrupt exactly each organization is, and I don't think we'll ever really know how corrupt it is because it depends on who's in office and it depends on the situation. It depends on so many things. That's what makes it hard to like decide how to fix it is because it's always so different. So um, I think on a scale of 1 to 10, how realistic this movie would be, I get like a 6 or 7. I think it's pretty realistic. Um, definitely think that humans are tend to be greedy and tend to be like this in real life, but um, as to the extent that everything went underneath the president's nose and like the 
Publix knows. I'm not sure like how secret they could keep an assassination for the pre from the president. I'm not really sure how all of that works. That that's the only part that I find hard to believe is that the president was not involved really in all in any of this, and that they were able to keep it completely secret from him and the public. I find that really hard to believe. Um, go ahead, Jim. Well, uh, that's uh, that pretty much wraps it up. I mean, um, do you want me to end it? Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, uh, um, if you guys have any questions, um, you can email us. Um, our email. Uh, you can you can leave a comment. Um, subscribe to yeah, our channel. Yeah, make sure you subscribe and. Uh, um, our email. We'll leave uh, a link to our a link to our rep website. Sorry, um, and then our email. I'll just go ahead and say it so that in case you can't find it. Um, view from the tower podcast at gmail.com no spaces no uppercase anything all one word and um next week we're going to be doing another movie review of um what was the name of the movie i'm not really sure but we're going to find out today <laughs> <laughs> hold on just a second and we'll tell you what that is um we're going to be doing movie movie reviews every week for the next four weeks Charlie, uh, the next uh, podcast will be about Charlie Wilson's war. So we hope that you tune in and leave us questions, and we'll do our best to answer those. And uh, we hope you enjoyed this podcast, and make sure you subscribe to us and follow us. Uh, I'm going to be making a Twitter page, I think, and so we'll leave all the links to that somewhere that you can find them easily. So thank you for listening.